I'm uh, a game director at Furico Games. And uh, yeah, here to talk about the uh, seven guests in VR. This, is, this was like considered to be the killer app of like CD-ROM back in the day. Like this was the thing that got people to buy uh, CD-ROMs for their PCs. And it's, it's such, it's a game with such a long and interesting history behind it. One of uh, one of the most popular FMV games that, that has ever come out, and I just got to start by asking, what was it like to like take on the seventh guest and, and start on your adaptation of it? Uh, it was pretty daunting. Uh, it's it's been one of my favorite games since uh, well almost thirty years now. Uh, so you definitely want to do it justice. And I've been working on a uh, fan made. Uh, game as well, 13th Doll, which, which came out a couple of years ago. So I, I spent uh, a lot of years in, in the Stauff Mansion uh, already, uh, but working at, at Vertigo Games sort of gave me the opportunity to uh, yeah, take it on as a sort of VR title. And uh, yeah, we, we were in touch and we still are with uh, Rob Landeros, who's the, uh, the original designer at, at Trilobite. Um, so we showed him what we had, starting with the demo, and he was totally on board with that. So, uh, yeah, even in the early days of the project, we had a, a, a good sense that we were on the right track, which, uh, yeah, helps a lot because uh, he's one of my heroes. So, you know, you don't want to disappoint him. And it's such an interesting thing to look at, too, because like Seventh Guest has been ported before, but this is like a full top to bottom recreation of the game. Like, and we're talking about a situation where like you originally you had like these these rendered environments. This is a situation where you can now interact with so many different things that you couldn't before. How did you go about adapting the puzzles, the interactions, everything that like you could do in the original game, bringing that into like a virtual space where like you can affect it with your hands? Yeah, I mean, we had to redo everything. Obviously, any asset from the original game, even if it would have survived all those years, would be pretty much useless in, in a VR setting. Uh, so everything, we had to model everything, and you, you, you do your research, you look at what, what you could see in the game, which is very limited because you had those predefined camera paths. So you take a lot of screenshots and uh, you, you get a, a feel of the room but then you've got to reinterpret that to current day uh, visual standards. So there's a lot of interpretation going on, like, okay, that's how the room was at the time, but we, I think we can get it to this level. And we have, we have our art director who uh, did, did a great job on that. Uh, but like you said, like interaction, like nothing we could use from the original game because the, the interaction was completely different back then. It was just a mouse, left mouse button, you click on things, that was the interaction, then something happened. And you want to keep that sense of sort of amazement that things happen around you. But yeah, interaction wise, we have to completely start from scratch, which is, I think is how it should be. If you bring it over to a new medium like VR, you, you better take advantage of it because otherwise you're doing a disservice to the medium and to any player who uh, expects something new and, and novel. Same for the puzzles, like we, we took inspiration of the puzzles. Uh, there are two in there that are, uh, one is exactly the same, <laughs> one is very similar, but same, same mechanics, different look. But the others we had to come up with ourselves. Filling in the gaps, like was there ever any disagreement or, or like contention about like, how do you fill in that space where there was like, there wasn't an engagement like this before, there wasn't uh, interaction like this before and like you had to like sort of wing it based off of what you had from the original? Um, I, I have to say it was pretty smooth sailing. I mean, there, there may have been lots of discussions internally, sometimes for or regarding very minute details. Like I think this button should work like this or this. How do you work with a door? Like a door is just a tricky thing in VR in general. No, it needs to swing both ways, but yeah, real doors don't do that. No, but in VR it works better that way. You have, you have those kinds of discussions. The original, you, you couldn't look for the, to the original for that because that's that's not how they did doors back then. It's just you click on the door and everything happened. So you had those discussions. Um, as far as uh, checking with the original designer, Rob Landeros, 
he was pretty much on board with whatever we were doing. We, we sent him updates on where we were and he was commenting on the mood of it. Like he said it was just fun to spend time in, in the mansion and look around and get a feel for it and, and hear the music and all that. So on that we were um, pretty much right from the start in, uh, in, a, in a good position. And the rest, yeah, it, VR interaction is always a bit tricky. <laughs> That's such an interesting thing to think about too. Like, I'm happy to hear that that Andreas was so involved in this. Has he has he seen like the final build? Uh, not the final, final, but uh, very recently. Yeah, and nice. uh, he's very laid back about it all. I mean, he's he's retired at this point and just keeps sort of tabs on on, on what we're doing. And uh, I'd love to sort of inform him because I like talking with him and just showing what we have. Yeah, no, there was there was nothing where he was saying, okay, that you're deviating. Too much from the path here this is not what the seven guests is supposed to be story-wise we stick real close to it we we have rewritten dialogues and sort of sometimes swap things around just slightly but it is in, in essence the same story as a fan of the original game like is there any without giving like a spoiler away or anything like is there any particular puzzle or interaction or exploration that you were really excited about bringing into the VR space and realizing in this new medium? Well, not, not so much the original puzzles, I have to say. I mean, they changed a lot. Like I mentioned, there are two in there that are reminiscent of the original one being like like a carbon copy. Um, that's that's the queen puzzle in, in the game room. Uh, if you remember, you have to place like eight queens on the... On the uh, the chessboard and I thought that would work just as well in, in VR interaction wise it's something that you can grip with your uh, controller and then sort of easily place wherever you want on the board so I think that could work just as well as it is as it did back then yeah a lot of the other puzzles just didn't translate that well to VR and that's why we sort of came up with our own uh, puzzles but in the same setting, same atmosphere, sometimes even sort of winking at, at the original, so that there is this uh, yeah, backdrop, backdrop where, it, where it came from. One of the early uh, FMV games, like they had full actors delivering full lines, and uh, it seems that that is kind of intact here as well. Like it's not an FMV, obviously, but like it is like you have these like real character, these real people taking up these characters and delivering them for this game. And what was it like to like adapt and recreate that in, in the VR version? That was uh, very challenging. It's it's technology that has been around for a couple of years, but it's it's been on mobile games or mobile apps, I should say. And it, it did make a brief appearance in VR as well. There's a, a demo for the uh, second Blade Runner film, but I'm not sure if that's even downloadable anymore, anywhere. Um, they used that technology. And when I saw that, my mind just instantly went back to the seven guests thinking, oh, that, that's the way to get that kind of uh, real life actors in your, your game in, in a way that they did in the original. Because to me that was so vital. I, I really did not want like rigged characters in there, which totally works in in any other sort of game, and that offers a lot of interactivity. And you know, there's an existing pipeline for that. Everyone knows exactly what what they're doing and what uh, how to approach that. But when I saw those actors in VR in that with that technology, I was like, no, this. This is just a match made in heaven that needs to be in, in the, the seven guest uh, yeah, VR version. And yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate that we ended up with that technology and that we did manage to get it to work on, on standalone headsets like uh, Quest 2, which was not a certainty going in. There was a lot of research and we had to work with partners, both on the compression side, but also the capture side, because we've never done that before. That, that's very dedicated uh, stuff. So we had to go to uh, that kind of capture studio uh, to record all that, which was a first for us. We asked them a lot of things, which was a first for them as well, because they, hadn't, they didn't work on a game of this scale uh, before. Uh, 
Um, so it was a learning experience for, for everyone involved, but that was the exciting part. And it's wild too, because like from what I've seen and a little bit of what I've played, like you're you're with these characters in the room. You can see around them. You can you can tilt your head and see different details about them in a way that you obviously could not in the original games because they were 2D. Um, and it's like, and and at the same time, there's almost like this still almost a sort of uncanny valley about just like how real they look right there in front of you. It's almost FMV 2.0. Yeah, it is. I mean, there is this, you, you can tell the compression and you can tell that it's, uh, it, it, there's, there's room to grow, let's say. Like in, in a couple of years, the technology will, I'm, I'm sure will have evolved uh, quite a bit, but I, I thought it's, it's convincing enough as it is. And it did capture the nuances of the facial expressions, which was very important to me. Like if they roll their eyes or if, if if they smirk a little or if they raise their eyebrows, those very minute details that's uh, so important for an actor uh, and so hard for a rigged character to, to get across and for animators as well. I mean, that's that's probably the hardest thing to get across, like the, the, the emotion of, of a character. Uh, I thought that still held up. And when I saw that, then I thought, okay, that, that's going to work those those characters the from even from the original they're just like you have all these like larger than life figures and like like quirky figures that make the game such an interesting narrative how hard was it to like find the right people to sort of fill those roles and and deliver them with uh, with the level of satisfaction you wanted yeah i mean that was tricky it's uh we, we did go to a, a casting agency we really approached this like you would with a film production. Because in essence, it is like a film production. You just have a different camera setup. And so we, we hired a film producer and spoke with uh, a casting agency. Uh, we're, we're based in the Netherlands. And that particular casting agency had a lot of people from abroad, like Americans, uh, people from Britain, uh, because we didn't want people with a obvious Dutch accent. I mean, that would not that would just not play well in like an international market. So we, we wanted, yeah, Americans, um, people from Britain, and they had a, a large selection of people to choose from, luckily. So we did casting sessions and we, we did ask uh, several people to um, audition for the role. And yeah, if it feels right, it feels right. Sometimes it's, it's hard to explain exactly who you want and sometimes you're surprised um, uh, but when they they start doing that thing it, it's it's a matter of seconds before you're like yeah this works or no it doesn't work you don't do it yourself obviously you do it with the film producer and with the director we also had a director so sort of the three of us made made our our, uh, our cast uh, come together speaking to like the technology used the the methods that went about it like could you see yourself doing another vr game like this where you would use like that re that real actor technology in this in this form of like a, in a new vr setting oh i would love to i mean it was a lot of fun i mean it was a um a, a film shoot of five days and very intense days but I, I don't think I've ever had so much fun professionally in my life, but uh, it, also I think the result sort of speaks for itself. Uh, the only hesitation I would, would use is it, it really needs to fit the project if you're going that way, that way because it's, um, it's, it's not the cheapest, it's not the easiest, it's not the most flexible. There, there are certain drawbacks. It's real hard to uh, go back uh, and say, you know, actually, we need a slightly different line here. Uh, in, instead of going left, could you go right? Because you're you're bumping into furniture now. Because we rearranged the room, and this works better for the game. So you're stuck with what you've captured, and um, it's it's not flexible. So it really needs to fit the game that you're trying to make. And the seven guests just felt like such a good fit because they're ghostly reenactments that happened before you, but you don't interact with them. So you're a passive observer, which really works well with this technology. I mean, if you need to follow them across the room or you need to shoot them, or there's all these interactivity 
uh, dialogue trees or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's probably not the technology that you want to use, at least not now. I mean, it's, it's evolving. Uh, I know there's exciting stuff coming, coming our way you know, on that front as well. Um, but yeah, it, it needs to fit the game. But if it does, the, the, the emotional impact that those actors can bring to it, like the, the, the fun or the scariness or the sexiness or the, yeah, any sort of emotion that just, just hits you. For a game that has like a history, as long as this one does, a lot of fans around the world, what would you say to like people that have played Seventh Guest before, big fans of it that are, that how would, how would you pitch this game to them to get them to come back to it after so many years? Um, well, what, what I've seen, the, the nicest thing that someone said was, this is how I remembered it. Even though they knew that it was nothing like how it was at the time, but in their mind, this is how they always wanted it to be. And I, I think that's that's how I hope that any old uh, fan of the game uh, would come away with this thing. Okay, this is how I always wanted it to be. I always wanted to be able to fully explore the, the mansions, be inside it and, and, and see those actors and see and, and play these kinds of puzzles. And sure, stuff is going to be different, but I'm hoping we've done justice to the uh, to the original game and sort of built on top of it. I do got to ask, like with the with PSVR two having come out this year and MetaQuest three having come out, did it give the development team like new opportunities to like really stretch this game to the next level? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it's it's a different balancing act because we knew that we had to be on both high end and uh, yeah lower end or standalone devices. So we had to be real flexible in how we approached this. It, it was a pretty short development timeline. So we couldn't say, okay, we'll make this uh, uh, version first and then we'll spend uh, another year uh, either upgrading it or downgrading it, whatever would make the most sense. So we were always working on multiple platforms at once. Um, but, but I think it's, it's not a detriment to any particular platform. I think we still managed to uh, use uh, strengths of, of both what comes next for vertigo are there any plans after uh, seventh guest comes out oh yeah i mean uh it's it's been a really busy time at vertigo because we we're so big at this point that multiple projects is, are happening at once like the, the seven guest is actually sort of the side project a lot of people are working on arizona too and uh th that's coming out uh in a matter of months so everyone is still very busy so <laughs> for the next foreseeable future, people will still be very busy on games and yeah, there will be new projects coming in and uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on. This is a fun one. How far do you think we're out from a, uh, a VR Mad Dog McCree remake? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, <laughs> I, I'm hoping that that's, that's going to be soon. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I'd love to play Matt or from Grieve VR. <laughs> yeah.